I'llBeHonest.com. I want to give my testimony today to glorify Jesus Christ, to exalt Him uh, for this testimony that happens to be uh, my life story isn't about me, it's about Him, it's about the Lord Jesus and uh, what He's done in my life to glorify Himself and to demonstrate His power. I will start off just about as far back as I can go uh, as my memory serves. I went through a lot of things as a child that uh, psychologically stopped my memory at points. There was points in my, in my, in my childhood that I don't remember. Uh, but I'll go back as far as I can remember. From a very, maybe four years old, just a very small boy, uh, was a victim of, of abuses. Uh, I could, one of my earliest memories was being attacked by a sick man, uh, took advantage of me. And this was just the beginning of what seemed to be a constant in my life, abuse. Uh, my mom's second husband, <clears throat> uh, still in grade school, probably six or seven, um, was the most cruel man that I've ever known in my life. Uh, and it was really, it was amazing because it was the first Christian that I ever knew. He was, um, he, he went from uh, coffee and Kenneth Copeland in the morning to Jack Daniels, uh, Hank Williams Jr., Coors Light by the afternoon into the evening. This was every day. So as a small boy, I didn't really understand uh, anything, the things of God. I didn't understand Christianity. It made no sense to me at all. Uh, this man was brutal. Uh, the violence in the, in the home was every day uh, without fail. I mean, it's my memory trying to recall. <clears throat> it wasn't a uh, it wasn't every now and then, it was just a constant in the home. It was every day. And at that time, we were introduced, me and my brother, to the Old Testament biblical stories. Uh, we had a children's Bible, and I don't recall if it was with that in addition to my mom talking to us about it, or if it was just through that text, that children's Bible. But I began to read about the power of God and the things that he would do uh, in, the, in these Old Testament accounts, uh, Moses and Noah. So I latched hold to this as a means of, of escape from this life. And as a small boy, I began to pray. And I prayed and I prayed. And I, I can remember many, many nights. I prayed for years. Uh, crying myself to sleep, listening to my mom's torture screams just daily until I stopped praying. I just stopped praying. It didn't seem like God heard me. It didn't seem like uh, nothing ever happened. Nothing got any better. If it could get any worse, I don't know. But So when, the, when that violence really started spilling out to me and my brother, my mom came and woke us up one night. I, I'll never forget. It was, at the, it was at the end of an evening or a night of just a really violent night that had spilled out onto to me and my brother. And that was it for my mom. Looking back, I, I never understood why she went through so much. And then at this point, when, <clears throat> when, her, when her children were, were assaulted uh, severely this evening, this in question, she came in the middle of the night with bags. And she had bags of clothes, and I remember in my heart, I still remember that I can feel the way I felt that, that night. Just, you know, looking at my mom and saying that, <laughs> thinking in my heart, this, you better not be playing, mom. So this, this, all this happened in such a way and caused me as a young man, this was probably 11, 12 years old, and coming out of that life was transitioned into a life of my mom uh, just pretty much allowed us to do whatever we wanted to do. And I fell into almost immediately drugs and alcohol. 
By the age of 12, I would say that I was an alcoholic and a drug addict. Uh, I would smoke, uh, smoke drugs and take pills and drink every day, 12 years old. And this quickly transitioned as a teenager into a very violent pattern of life. Uh, Brutal, brutal violence that, that would be perpetrated on other people. Uh, I started hanging around with the wrong kind of people. Uh, we, would, we would rob, we would steal, we would beat people up, take their stuff uh, as a teenager. <clears throat> and I hated God. I hated God. And I wasn't, you're not with me, you're against me type of hated God. I outwardly hated God. Uh, I would curse the heavens, uh, cuss with profanity, say unbelievable things that you wouldn't say to your worst enemy, to God. This God that had an appointed day for me. This God that would, that had shed his blood on the cross for me. This lifestyle spun out into uh, a life of narcotics, uh, ended up becoming what I had hated so much as a child. I, I, uh, girl that I was with in high school, I got her pregnant and I, I ended up leaving her and I went, got another girl pregnant, came back to, to the girl that I had went out with in high school, got married and I ended up becoming the thing that I hated. I was abusive, I started shooting dope, I would smoke, uh, smoke coke, shoot dope, I would do. I got to the point where I couldn't, I had absolutely no control. Sin reigned. Sin reigned in my life in such a powerful way uh, and I hated it. I hated it but I could not do anything. Uh, I would beat my wife, um, I would shoot dope, I would steal from the people that loved me. Uh, so I could do these things. I had, I had illicit affairs. I had just unbelievably uh, horrible things going on in my life. I remember, I was, just to give you an idea of, of how powerful this sin had, how much it reigned in my life. I had, my small son was, was in the house with me and he walked in when I was in the middle of shooting dope. And, I, and even though my son was sitting there looking at me, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. Uh, I, I hung myself. I hung myself one time. I was hung unconscious, swinging, and the rope broke. The rope broke. Um, I had OD'd and fell out on the floor. And this man that hated God, this man that hated God, I cried out to God that day. But I didn't cry out to him for anything other than just to save me. I didn't want to die. I hit the floor and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe and I couldn't even move to try to get somebody's attention. I got up, finally, I couldn't breathe and then boom, when I, when I asked God, don't, don't let me die, don't let me die. Boom, my breath came into my lungs and I got up and I told the people in this dope house what had happened to me. I told them that's it, I'm done. I'm, I'm, the, I'm not gonna do this anymore, that's it, it's over. I was dead, I was dead. And in 20 minutes, maybe a half hour tops, I was in the same place, laying on that bathroom floor, OD'd again. I'll just do a little bit less, I thought. This is how sin reigned in my life. It got to a point where, where I had, I had guns to my head. I would put pistols to my head. I would put shotguns in my mouth. I tried to hang myself once. I just wanted to die. You know, I hated myself so much, but at the same time, I was so arrogant and so prideful. And it's amazing to me, I don't understand how two 
things can live in the same house. How I could hate myself, the one to kill myself, and at the same, same time be so prideful and arrogant, you know, with everybody else that was around me. It got to a, to a point and it spun and it spun out and this woman that should have left me a long time ago finally, that was it, after 15 years. And she moved on and I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for her to move on. I wasn't ready for this. So I ended up hurting, hurting her and a friend of hers uh, really bad. I was arrested in the commission of a murder and I just had hate. I had hatred in my heart. I had anger um, and I was without hope. I was without hope. I had no hope at all. When I got, when I was incarcerated, I just wanted to go up to the second tier and jump off. I just wanted to end it all. You know, I just. I was so miserable. I was so miserable. And never, ever did I ever think that there was any chance for me. I had tried to clean myself up. And it just always ended up worse in the end than it was in the beginning. It just, so I went to jail. I was arrested. And I was facing a good, good amount of time. Been in and out of jail my whole life. Um, as in and out of jail, or I was running from the cops my whole life. The story of, the, of sin reigning in my life brought me to this point. In God's sovereign providence, if you would have froze right there on this picture of this mess and, and, and asked how in the world could anything good ever come of this? And I, and I went, and there was a, there was a group of missionaries that came to this detention facility that I was at. And I wasn't the guy that, uh, I'd never gone to church my whole life. I wasn't church. I hated God for not helping me when I was a kid. And I never ever opened the Bible and I, I, I wasn't somebody that could even be talked to about Jesus. I couldn't be talked to, you couldn't open the scripture and, and and talk to me about anything. Truly, salvation is of God. It's His time. It's when He decides in power to move. Absolutely. Uh, I had what some would call a Pauline conversion, but that, that day in, in jail, as, as these days that I got arrested, my only comfort for these I, I, I was there four days before I was converted. My only comfort was detailed and in, in, uh, real detailed and intricate plans of revenge that uh, didn't exclude murder, arson, kidnapping. This is the only thing that would give me comfort. And, and I, that day they called for a special service. These missionaries had came to this facility. and. I still remember, I still remember the, the, the very moment that they made this announcement for a special service for seven guys, only seven. And I remember before I even knew what I was doing, I was walking towards the door and I was even wondering to myself, what are you doing? I went to the service and for the first time, <clears throat> I heard the gospel, I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, I heard that he, you know, what, what Christ had done for us. And God took that word, God took that gospel, and he applied it to my heart. He pierced and pricked this hard heart. Uh, and I went back that, that day to my tank, and I wasn't converted. I wasn't converted right there. I heard the gospel, and the gospel started working on my heart. It says, the scripture says, and rightly, that it's a two-edged sword, uh, quick and powerful, a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing center of the, the spirit and the soul, revealing the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And that's what the Word of God had done that day. It had pierced my heart, and it was revealing to me who I was. You know, it was revealing to me 
my, my black-hearted, evil, wicked, the centrality of who I was and how desperately I needed a savior, how desperately I needed Jesus. And I went back to my wing and I continued to have these thoughts. I heard the gospel, I went back to my dorm and I continued to have these thoughts. And this was my comfort. And that night, about 3.30 in the morning, if I'd had eyes to see it, I would have seen the Spirit of God. I would have seen it there. Uh, but I felt him, I felt him. Something that I never ever could even have imagined at that, at that point in my life. I felt like a building was on my chest. I felt a sense of conviction that I couldn't even understand. It was supernatural. I felt like at any moment, God was gonna throw me and cast me into hell. I felt this pressure. And I just started crying out to God that night. This man that cursed God and profaned the heavens. And I started crying out. I started crying out in an open tank. It was 3.30 in the morning. People were everywhere and they're wondering, what's this guy doing? This, this tough guy, this arrogant guy, he's crying out to God. And I cried out that night to Jesus. And I don't know what all I said because I said a lot that night. I said a lot, I opened my heart. He opened my heart and I just, but I remember the first words that I said. first words that I said, this spirit came upon me and regenerated me. And I just looked up and he revealed himself to me through his spirit. And I literally looked up in, in, this, in my wing, in my tank, and I said, Jesus, you're real. You're real. And then I just praises came out for pleading for forgiveness praises that went on for an hour or more that night i was radically converted i had been a slave how mightily satan wields drugs and alcohol and addictions uh, against men he, he does so mightily and in my life absolutely completely and totally oppressed without hope apart from christ and there is a sovereign grace in election because I hated God and I had wicked evil plans in my heart right up until the moment that God in mercy came down and saved me, plucked me from the fire. And that night, that night I didn't know nothing. I didn't know no scripture. I didn't know anything that was in the Bible, but I knew one thing that night and I don't care who it was or how many people would have tried to tell me. I knew one thing. I knew that Jesus Christ was real. The Son of God, Jesus, he was real. And he came and he died on the cross. And he died on the cross in my place. He bore my sins. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to me. The Spirit of God did. And, and hopeless, hopeless for over 20 years since a small child to drugs, alcohol, the needle, addiction, anger, violence, sexual immorality, perversions, hopeless. That night, for me, for this man, I was radically and completely delivered. 20 some years of this reign of sin in my life, and it was gone. And I'll never forget the next morning, I woke up and for just a split second, for just a split second, I had a feeling of terror in my heart as I opened my eyes. I was just terror stricken for just a, just a second. I didn't know, did that really happen? Did that really happen last night? And God gave me peace right then. And I've had it ever since. I spent the next few years in the penitentiary growing, uh, studying God's word. Uh, he takes sinful men, sinful men that are just rotten to the core. And through the blood of his son, Jesus, he cleans us up. 
and he plugs us back in and he uses us to work in the lives of other people. Now, even now, Wednesday, I go to the same facility that I was saved. Only God can do that. Even before I was off parole, I wasn't even supposed to be in the, in the walls of that facility, but God opened up doors and I carry the gospel and I carry this testimony and I communicate this gospel to these men there who are in the same place, who are in the same jumpsuits that I was. To the glory of God, he is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. I just praise God. He's called me out of the darkness into the marvelous light. However your testimony goes, we are unable to save ourselves. We aren't able to do anything uh, towards our salvation. It must be God. It must be God coming down and working in our lives. And I just praise God. Give Him all the glory for saving a sinner like me. All you who, who might hear this, two things. You're never too far gone for the Lord Jesus to come down and, and if you'll just cry out from your heart, if you'll, if you'll plead His merit, what Jesus has done, if you cry out from a heart's heart, you'll be saved. Don't think that you're too wicked, that you're too evil. I didn't even tell you, but a part of the, of the wickedness of me, man cannot be too far gone. Uh, you cannot be too evil, you cannot be too wicked. At the same time, you who think that you're not like that guy, uh, man, he really did need the Lord for you. People who think that you can, of your own ability, uh, merit any kind of uh, righteousness in front of God. The greatest sin in the world as great as my sins and all of my, my wickedness, as great as that was, as sinful, as evil, as wicked as that was, it, it did not hold a candle to my rejection of Christ. It's the greatest sin. It's the greatest sin. And you don't have to be uh, in the slumps and in the gutters and in the, in the throes and, and rain of addictions and to be rejecting Christ. The man who got the great job and thinks everything's good in his life but has not Christ, he's committing the greatest sin. He's rejecting the Lord. Uh, so whoever you are and whatever you've done, if this testimony of mine or anything about it rings true to you, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus. And you who think that you don't need this kind of help, you who think that and you're not like that guy, I thank you as the scripture says that I'm not like that publican over there. Or that publican that beat his chest and said, forgive me, Lord, for I'm a sinner uh, who will be in, in glory in that great day. He who cries out for the forgiveness of sins the greatest sin is the rejection of the Son of God. It's the greatest sin that there is. To believe in Jesus, to believe in Christ, is to first believe your state before a holy God, a holy and righteous God. How can you come from the darkness into the marvelous light if you don't know you're in the darkness? I told uh, one of the guys in jail, I said, if I came to your house, if I came to your house and I opened the door and I said, come on out, you're free to go. You'd think I was crazy. But if a guard came and opened the dungeon door and said, get your stuff, you're free to go. That's good news. That's good news. The gospel is the good news. But the good news must come out of the bad news. You must understand that you are in prison and you are a slave to sin, whether it's what seems to be great sin or your little sins, as you would call them. It's 
the same thing. We all need the door to be opened, the door that is Jesus Christ, that will deliver us from this life of sin and deliver us from the wrath of God that abides on everybody from birth. Be reconciled to God through Jesus.